Is there even room for two people? Yes, we will make room. We will move the signs. It's probably a big sign. Okay, there's a couple important things. And that is uh, drippy has to stay prominently displayed. Yes, prominently displayed. Okay. Uh, this one's our live feed, so we can see what's going on. Scoot up a little bit. This is us. That's camera. And this is. I can't read the question, so you're going to have to man that fine. You, you got it. Finally got my other friends to fire back. Steven. Okay, they can hear us. And. Monts Terry, how you doing? Um, I'm Stephen Dinelli, concept art lead for Shroud of the Avatar, and this is Bob Cooksey, lead environment artist and raccoon provocateur. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, it's a long story. Bob and I are uh, roommates, and uh, as you can see, we're a little bit like Felix and Oscar, but we get along great. <laughs> we're office mates. Yes. Yeah. Did I say roommates? Yes. I meant office mates, whatever. All right. <laughs> I didn't want anyone to think something unseemly was going on. Yes. <laughs> Do you smoke cigars? No. All right. I smoke the cigars. Anyway, um, Bob and oh, I God. are going to be chatting with you for uh, probably about 20 minutes of here, taking your questions. <laughs> and so I'm going to scroll back to the beginning. Hopefully, Chris will not make fun of me again. Where are we? Droopy's beak is not entering the liquid. All right. Uh, at Steven from Cool Phoenix. Um, I might need your help for a mosaic. I'm doing. Oh, I gotta turn off the scroll thing, or I'm gonna lose you. Uh, mosaic I'm doing for Shroud of the Avatar. Yep, I got the Richard Garriott approval. That's excellent, Cool Phoenix. Um, I have no idea what you have in mind with the mosaic, but it sounds like fun. All right, Pyro, roommates, office mates, you live at the office right now, right? Correct. No. I live at the office. Bob lives north, I live south. <laughs> he has dogs. I have a snake, actually. Ball python. Um... What's next? So the devs convinced me to upgrade to Lord before Kickstarter is over. Uh, Eakin, please upgrade to Lord before Kickstarter is over. Um, what kind of convincing do you need? Let's see. What's next? Uh, the Hairy Man. Are you two the only art guys in the company right now? We are, well, Actually, technically, we're the I, only full-time uh, people right. Uh, right now, but we do have a list of people that if we get the necessary money that we are going to hire, we've already got them pretty much in the queue. Um, we have, uh, what, half a dozen contractors that we bring um, on for different things. So a group of people helped us out with Kickstarter, and you saw some of their amazing art this uh, website, all of that. So it's, um, the, yeah, once the Kickstarter is a go, we'll be staffing up and rolling. Okay. Um, F 
from Monks Terry. How's Bob doing? It was about <laughs> I was about to work, but looks like I'll follow your stream. Bob, good call. Bob, how are I'm you doing? I'm doing just fine. There have been no possum or raccoon-related incidents last night, although a possum did visit me last night at around two two a.m. and uh, left without incident. I did not accost it. I'm doing really well. Bob, yes. I understand that you had an issue with raccoons. Could you explain I, how the issue with the raccoon happened? I already did it uh, last time when I was on. Make long story short, a raccoon has learned how to slide back my screen door at my place, and he got into my kitchen again, and I went to shoo him out, and the second that I turned on the light and went to step, the raccoon came like a bat out of hell and went right under my foot, and I knew it would bite me if I stepped on it. So I kind of yanked my foot back and lost my balance and fell flat on my ass. So that is the um, that is the raccoon-related injury that I that I uh, had happened to. So you're back with Bob Cooksey and Stephen Danielli, the I guess leads of the art department, if you call us. <laughs> We were watching and could hear them fine. So, yes, you oh, could really? see us and hear us fine, but we had completely lost the connection on our end. Not sure what happened there, but Gina's got a, Gina got us back up and running. So, thank you, Gina. Greatly appreciate so it. So, here we is. Yes. Okay. So, Did let's you see where we're at. Uh, she did it. We heard all about the raccoon incident. Excellent. Yay! Yay until for raccoons. Came in the room. At Bob, what can you tell us about the different environments in the game, such as certain locations like deserts or mountain regions? Well, we would reveal this, but frankly, the art that we've already done is so glorious that you'll need at least a week to steal yourselves for seeing it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, right now, what I'm working on are interiors. Um, I'm doing mainly like interior altars and, and castles and that kind of stuff and working out normal maps and that kind of thing. So uh, right now we're sort of, um, Stephen is doing concept work for the outside environment stuff and I'm concentrating on coming up with some kind of exciting interiors of castles and all of that. And um, we're just working out what we're going to do with uh, normal maps and um, you know, what level of detail we want in the game, and we're open to hearing people's opinions on this matter. But don't be disappointed if we can't follow every suggestion because everyone's got a different opinion. So we'll do our best to please as many as we can. Yeah, and we would like to confirm that there will be interior spaces in Shroud of the Avatar. Yes. Um, all right, from Monks Terry. It's Steven. Do you work on characters, outfits? Do you have any ideas whether the wear and tear will show on players' equipment, as in ragged cloaks, torn armor, etc.? That's a really good question. Okay, so yes, I do work on characters, and actually the first round of characters that we posted on Kickstarter was my work. Um, and then the subsequent characters and a few other things came from some of those artists that we mentioned earlier that came in. Um, so, wear and tear, showing on the equipment, ragged cloaks, torn armor, etc., is going to fall under the final art direction and where we're going with the game. We're certainly going to have lived-in feel-looking sorts of things. Um, what level of ragged cloak that you can get, like, you know, is your cloak pretty decent, does it have a few tears in it, or it is just a shambles, is still TBD. But yes, it's definitely going to have a bit of a lived-in feel, and it, one of the things that we're striving to do is add character to the characters and just amp up the epicness of it. So the stuff should be cool. Hopefully that answers your question. And also, uh, don't forget that this is going to be, like, um, coming to the fans in iterations, so it might start out where most of the clothing is pretty pristine, but that doesn't mean that you won't get more raggedy looking stuff in the future. And that's the kind of the beauty of doing the things this way instead of, you know, doing a, a box game for Xbox or whatever. You can just iterate and 
keep bringing in new stuff to the audience. So, PC gaming is where it's at. All right, this is from Link, Link of Hyrule. And at Bob, what game would be comparable for the level of graphics you're shooting for? Right now, um, we've gone back and forth. At first, uh, we thought that we were going to develop for the iPad, the iPhone, so we started out doing very simple um, um, art for those platforms. But now that we've switched back to the PC, um, Honestly, the sky's the limit. It's going to be determined on how much money we get, how many, how much staff we have. Uh, we don't want to overpromise things, but right now I'm doing. Um, what would you compare the altar to? I would say Skyrim. Um, I know we've that name has come up a lot, but when we look at a game that's out there, and, and Skyrim is a Skyrim is a very realistic game. Um, we want to keep the Ultima flavor in the visuals, so it's probably a bit more stylization than what Skyrim does. But yeah, as far as like where the bar's at, that's it, and that's what we're going to strive for. But what we also want to do is bring a degree of imagination to the stuff, and um, I'll be releasing this uh, first altar sort of cathedral type thing, an image from it uh, in the next couple of days, and I think you'll sort of see possibly where we're going. Um, once again, it's going to de depend on the number of staff that we have and how much we can pull off. Uh, we don't want to overpromise, but we do have the capability of doing some dynamite stuff. I think you're really going to like this altar scene. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys have, have seen uh, uh, Steven's um, big statue with the wings, with the lava underneath it. Um, so that's a good uh, sort of the bar that we're shooting at for the exterior environment shots. That one's definitely on the list. Okay, the hairy man. Are you building most of your normal maps from high poly models or photo sourcing them? No, no. The problem with, uh, okay, it's two separate things. If you have characters, you want to, you want to do it that way with the high poly to low poly uh, uh, in, uh, normal map creation. But for somebody like me, I cannot afford to do a, a normal map for every single prop in my environments. So I need to make like a normal map for bark and use that across the bark in the scene rather than trying to do a high to low poly normal map for every single tree in the scene. Um, that just skyrockets your texture count. So um, I've been in this field as an environment artist for I think 17 years coming up um, in the next couple of days. And um, I've learned that... Happy anniversary! Thank you! Happy anniversary to Bob, 17 yeah. years. But that's one of the um, things that you juggle when you're creating a scene. You really have to use your head and be smart about how you approach it. Um, we've also... I hope I can talk about this. We are talking about... I don't know. <laughs> I, I, yeah, neither one of us does. Uh, we're thinking about doing giveaway packs of environmental props. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not, that's not public yet. Oh, it's not. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to stop they right shouldn't there. Let, they shouldn't let a crackpot <laughs> like me in. Anyway, right. um, theoretically, if we do such a thing, that the stuff will be delivered in a way that is not super high poly and not a million unnecessary textures. In other words, it will not grind your... Right. We're it's going to be thrifty and optimized. Um, building a high res, ripping to a low res is, uh, I mean, certainly it's the way to go, but it's also incredibly time consuming and expensive. And, you know, sculpting things in Mudbox or ZBrush and, or just photo sourcing it and running it through Crazy Bump, um, we'll find what looks best for the lowest amount of time. I think that you'll see when when I release the shots of the environments that we have right now, um, you'll see how I, I use normal maps, and I think that, it, that it's been pretty effective. All right. This one is from Jude Obscure. I like that name. Um, hey, guys. Some small studios are streaming their artist dev office during production of their different projects on Twitch or Ustream. 
uh, would you guys consider letting us watch the art being made over the next couple of years on soda? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I honestly, that would be badass. Can I swear? I'm swearing. Yeah, I think that would be totally badass. Um, I've put together GIFs of the concept art that I put together so you can watch the animated GIF and see that process. But actually being able to ride shotgun so you can see what we're doing every day would be really cool. I actually um, wanted to be doing that for my part of this video. Um, so that the camera would be looking over my shoulder at what I was working on rather than looking at me. But we've set up a studio in a separate office, so that's going to have to happen later if it happens. But yeah, I do think it's a great idea. Um, you know, you can learn from it and just see how we do things and be pretty cool, I think. So just to let you know, uh, my background is, if anyone cares, uh, some of the games that I've worked on is Environmental Lead um, or just Senior Artist are Return of the King, Lord of the Rings for EA, Blood Rain 2, um, uh, Frontierville, Loveville, um, Ghostbusters. The Ville. Yes. The Ville. The have Facebook I, Have game. I heard of The Ville? Uh, it was actually the number one Facebook game for a while, but that was in my Zynga days. But I'm very relieved to be back doing uh, PC titles and Xbox <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, also, Jack Nicholas 5 Golf. I did prop work for Call of Duty 3, uh, texture support for uh, Turok 3, um, worked on Vax, which was a game nobody really ever heard of, and a bunch of demos and stuff like that. That's awesome, Bob. So this is from uh, Monkstery. Sounds epic. Thanks for your answer. Bob, thanks for elaboration. Awesome stuff. Thanks. All right. Bioforge. What's the new live stream link? Coming from Monkstery. This one for Chris. Spam. So just to clarify, if I wasn't supposed to say about giving away packages of art, let me stress that this has not been decided yet for sure, so don't get your hopes up. But it's something we've tossed around. Let's put it that way. All right. At uh, Legionus, uh, if you want to read over my farming ideas, some interesting concepts in there. I'm actually, we are using Chris's logon, and as Fire Lotus said, he's actually in a meeting right now. So you're stuck with Bob and I. Um, uh, let's see, Grim Reaper, at Steven. So will there be beheadings and blood? I, I uh, don't know. Is that something you're looking know. for? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Should we uh, alert the FBI? No, we don't really no. know that yet. I, I Look, the whole point of this campaign is to get you guys involved in it. Yeah. And we're trying to get a sort of a feel about what the fans are looking for. I know that people have been really wanting to see Richard get back to his roots. Um, you know, so we're looking at the older fans as well as new fans to tell us what you guys really want to see. And my sense is not a lot of blood and gore, but more of a fantasy, magic, um, fighting, but not, you know, bloodletting for the sake of it. <laughs> I don't think. I disagree. I say bring on the beheading. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, the I'm the light flow. and fluffy one, and I, I look the opposite, but I'm not. <laughs> I, um, so when I game, I just finished up uh, Dead Space 3. I, I like the visceral experience. Honestly, we don't know where we're going to be um, as far as rating and what we plan on doing with blood and gore. Our... Uh, beheadings. Now, I do know blood plays a very important part in games because it communicates that your enemy is being wounded. So there will have to be some type of feedback that says, yes, we're doing damage. Um, ultimately, what that is, we don't know yet. All right. Um, let's see. From Jude Obscure, alter image incoming. Very excited. Yay! By the way, I'm lighting it right now. It's all built and, and textured and all of that. And that just takes a little bit of time. I want to get it really right. 
um, but it's on the way. All right. Uh, this is from Link of Hyrule at Bob and Spencer. That's Stephen. I don't know. Stephen <laughs> Daniele. I like Spencer, though. That could be my alter ego. Um, will the graphics be moddable, similar to Skyrim? If it is, would that be only offline or online as well? So uh, we're not going to answer that question at the moment. Um, uh, define mod. Well, because I've heard that described like 5,000 things before. Uh, we know the answer to that. Well, we just... Look, we're not, <laughs> we're not really comfortable talking about... We, we right. discussed this this morning, and it's not set in stone yet. Richard has not been here. He just got here. So they're having a big meeting to discuss these things right now. So We have upcoming announcements later today and tomorrow, and neither of us want to steal the thunder from those. So um, we will table that question until a further meeting, and then we will happily answer it. Uh, let's see. Fire Lotus. today. Okay. Is there a live feed today? I swear the leak link keeps going in a loop or cutting out. That's from Linus. Um, I don't know if we're going to do the uh, the Google chat. Not sure. Today or not. Um, it's been a lot of fun the last two days. And um, as we've been coming in here and chatting with the community, I think we're all, I know I am getting much more personal enjoyment out of this because I get it. Yeah. Are, are, we get a ramble. <laughs> are you guys enjoying this? I mean, is this something that you'd like us to do? I personally couldn't fathom anybody being the least bit interested in anything I had to say. <laughs> so this is... <laughs> From Mons, Terry, happy 17th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, a shout-out to Ken. My coworker from the Eclipse days, who is one of our contributors, I don't want to say, say his last name because um, I don't know if he wants that, but hi to Ken B. Ken B. All yep. right. Thank um, you for your support, my friend. That's cool. I'm going to give a shout out to my little man, Nicholas. If you happen to be watching this right now, um, I hope you're entertained. And uh, tell Mama you don't have to do your homework yet, so you can watch. Okay. Are we? Dun, 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 dun. Let's see what else we have here. At Stephen, will you excuse us for a moment? I think Bob has something to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, they're on to me already. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, okay. Well then. Oh, love it. Okay, so that's for Monks Terry. Um, Way to go, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, oh, Bodine Band. Woo, I love Link Info. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm from Barcelona. Okay, let's see. From Cool Phoenix, uh, he was about to spill something that wasn't linked yet. Mm. Can we see the video today? Uh, may I clarify? I was not about to spill back. because I was not sure. I was just trying to clarify what that guy was asking. Um, but I may have spilled. Give me more time. <laughs> Pay attention to the Kickstarter and uh, the Shroud of the Avatar website because we have a lot more news, announcements, and information coming. And it's really excited, obviously, because we're trying to hold it back. All right. Cat out of the bag from Mike Bronner. And then from Mystic. At raccoon both. out of the bag. Raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> or possum. Okay, both of us. This cartoony, bubbly graphic seems to be the new fad in 3D modeling for online games such as Diablo. 
Diablo, WoW, or even Elder Scrolls Online compared to the grungy realism that was the rage in games like UO or Skyrim? What is the direction you're moving in, and how hard is it to implement realism in a mostly online game like Shroud? Well, it, it depends on what your art direction is. It really is dictated by what environment you're talking about. Like, if, for instance, we're doing a, a desert scene, we're certainly going to go with the grungy look. But if you want to know my personal opinion, I think that the whole grunge thing got a bit overdone. It was just too much of it all the, all the time, in my view. So don't be expecting some sort of, like, uh, first person from the 90s, um, grungy looking stuff because it's not going to be like that. What I would say, I mean, if if I get my uh, wish in this, is that it will be very ornamental stuff. Um, you know, weird patterns, um, otherworldly looking stuff, and we're hoping to skip a bit. Well, we're going to have some pretty well-worn things like castles and that, but we're hoping to put a new spin and more creative um, spin on that and how I tend to achieve that is making very ornate um, textures um, with crazy patterns and all of that. I think when you see the altar you're going to see exactly what I mean and you do the normal maps with them so that they look like they have this definition and highlights and that and um, so when you guys see that screenshot I think it will be clear sort of where we hope to head. Um, once again it's just going to depend on resources uh, but I know that we're going, going to do our part to make this the best looking thing that that's possible. You know. Yes, we are. Better to do no work than bad work. Yeah. Um, so we use Diablo and WoW and um, throw in Torchlight as one end of the spectrum, and then Skyrim at the other end of the spectrum. Um, where we end up is definitely going to be somewhere in the middle, and right now we are much closer to the Skyrim um, Ultima Online realistic feel. Um, things evolve throughout the development process. You are participating in the development process, so if suddenly, you know, 18,000 people start clamoring for, oh, we want this to look like Torchlight, then we're going to have to reevaluate that direction. Um, I hope that answers the question. It's still, uh, we're still in process of hammering that out, um, and it's going to be really solid. And then as, as I said, it's more like um, Ultima Online, kind of on the Skyrim side. We'll see. Yeah, we're trying to take the ultimate or Ultima uh, feel and just update it a little bit and make it a little bit more complex and taking advantage of the technology that we have today that we didn't have 10 years ago. All right, so from Mystic, love Ghostbusters, awesome game. Thank you. See, um, Pyro also loved Vex. Really? I mean, thank you. Yes. <laughs> it was back to 01 or 03 yeah, when that came out? No, it was, I know I worked on it in 2001. Yep. Um, I did some texture support for Turok 3 before I even worked there. Um, and then so I, because of that, I ended up getting hired on Vex. And I did like the uh, the volcano level and the, um, what was that crazy uh, room? Um, oh, God, what do you call it? Where if you look at it from like the left side, it's all yellow. The uh, right side, it's all reds. And what do you call that kind of room? There's a name for it. Rainbow? Spectrum? No. <laughs> Crystal. Uh, can anyone help us here with the thing that I created, but I'm too seen to <laughs> call? All right. From the hairy man. Great. Thanks for the detailed answer on texture maps. I can't wait to see your alter scene. Um, try my best for the scene quality. Um, as you do, as I would love to be able to help out. We would love you to help out, hairy man. Really appreciate it. That would be wonderful. Um, from BioForge, Stephen, you look exactly like Edward Norton. <laughs> that he do. Thank you, BioForge. When I first started working with Bob and we became Facebook friends, he was commenting on how sharp I looked when I'm wearing the sport jacket in that uh, stage photo shoot that I had. I had no idea what he was talking about. 
He was actually talking about the Ed Norton picture that I was using yeah, for my he, avatar for a while. He had it on his Facebook page, and I really had, had no, no clue it wasn't him. Um, Mystic thinks I look like Will Wheaton. I got that earlier today. I have not seen Will Wheaton since I was watching Next Generation, and he's friends with friends that are up in Seattle at uh, WOTC, so I'll have to look him up and see what he looks like. Okay, uh, Strife, is there going to be gambling with other players like poker uh, with the game currency? Um, that's a game developer question, a game designer question. I personally have yes. not heard anything of that sort, but who knows what could come later. Right. I I, I'm not going to go there. I have no idea. Um, from Mike Bronner, at both, have designs for mini games been discussed, like Strife mentioned, card games, dice, etc.? Um, again, I don't know. Do you know, Bob, have you heard anything? I have not heard about any mini games, but I would tend, once again, we're not releasing a box game. So just because something doesn't appear in the first iteration of, of things does not mean that it's not going to get added later. I personally have not heard a thing about mini games or anything like that so far, but that doesn't mean that six months down the line we couldn't add that. Um, part of our plan of keeping people um, interested is to continually add stuff like whatever, you know, maybe mini games, maybe something else. Um, and so I think that's... You know, you're sort of dead in the water with a uh, box game if it's not good from the get-go or not complete. But this gives us a chance to, um, you know, weekly or monthly or whatever, do updates that people um, keep that keeps them excited. Yeah, and I can tell you right now, Fire Lotus has already written down this information, and the designers, if they're not aware of it or haven't already been discussing it, it's definitely on the list to be discussed, because I agree. Uh, that would be cool. Um, Monks Terriot, Stephen, agreed. Bring on the beheading. Yes. <laughs> right. From Elaine, blood, gore, and include them all. <laughs> yes. I'm with you. Oh, my God. Let's get a visceral experience going. All right. One for Fire Lotus. I want to see things that game makers love to do, but get it wrong more often than right. Okay, that's from Rista. Such as? Yeah, I don't quite Could understand. Could you clarify? Yeah, maybe it's further on here. I'm kind of like slow through, slow through the scrolling. Uh, there's one from Chris. What are some of the concept ideas for art design for the inside of the houses? Have you all discussed it there? And will there be yard areas front and back? That's from Legionis. Um, that's actually a really good question. When I first started, it was concepting houses, and then we moved on to uh, big splash images and what our environments and the whole vibe of Shroud of the Avatar is going to look like. It is on the list to do. Um, we're not at that point yet. Um, I know it's in documentation, but we haven't drawn anything. So Stephen right now is really handling the big kind of grand um, huge features of the environment and the uh, kind of micro stuff is going to come later. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm waiting for him to be finished with this stuff, I just went ahead and modeled a couple of, um, um, actually quite a few interiors. So, um, Bob, this one's for you. Yay! Lanica, hope I pronounced that right, would like more raccoon stories. Would you like an alligator gar story instead? No. Raccoon. Might I I don't have another one. Okay, so so what do the ra raccoons do in that or raccoon? Is he like hanging out on your back patio, smoking um, a cigarette, waiting for you to come out? Well, to be something? honest, to be my secret shame is after I uh, told you guys about the raccoon getting into my kitchen, I swore to everybody I would stop feeding the raccoons, but I came home uh, from happy hour, uh, what, two nights ago? And I decided, for reasons unknown, that it would be a good idea to put out some more food for them. <laughs> and so I looked out, and uh, I heard a noise, and there was a possum actually eating the food. And behind him, I thought I already said this, but maybe it's during when uh, we got blanked out, lost contact or whatever. Anyway, so I look out, and the, the possum 
runs away, and behind it is this beautiful white cat that is obviously a purebred cat. It was white, and it had, like, black uh, splotches on his face. And when he saw me, he took off, so I think he's feral. And then about two hours later, I hear hissing, and it awakens me. And uh, there's a gigantic raccoon hissing at Bandit, the small one that wrenched my ankle. So they were fighting over the food. And... I ended up having to throw water on them, which is makes me wonder why I left out food in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Artists are crazy, okay? Yes, we are. It, yes, it was, it was a total crackpot thing to do. Um, no but I really do no want to tell the car come. story, if I might. Okay, Bob's going to tell his alligator gar story. Story. Okay. So we have blown off our time. We're at 3.48 Central Time, and I say we go till 4. I do too. Nobody else yeah. is knocking at the door. Right. They'll be in at 4. So we're going to keep going for the next 12 minutes. Okay, get your pencils out. N-O-O-D-L-E-Y-D-O-O. -O -O. That's Noodly Do, named after my dog Noodles. And that's my YouTube channel. So if you want to see my videos, you can go there. And one of them, well, we had a meeting. You guys can take the next two hours if you'd like. We're, I'm, I'm well to listen to no. some dire straits on in the background while I listen to the stories. I, I We're getting more. terrorized by a designer. <laughs> Say hi, Rick. Hi, Rick. See you guys soon. <laughs> Bye, Rick. Bye, Bye. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, my YouTube channel is Noodly Do, and I'm a fossil hunter, so I'm constantly out there in nature. And... Uh, I was wading into this creek with my friend John, and I saw this five-foot-long alligator gar, which is a fish, and they look really prehistoric, and they're huge, and they've got big teeth and everything. So John actually filmed me bending over and picking up this five-foot-long alligator gar, and the thing just goes berserk right on camera and bitch slaps me across the face really hard. And John is just laughing like I never heard him laugh before, and he actually takes a clip of it smacking me in the face and slows it down just in case I wasn't humiliated enough the first time around. So if you'd like to see me in that embarrassing position, go to noodlydo.com. Bitch slapped by an alligator gar. By an alligator gar. <laughs> you can see my dog Noodles being attacked by a deer, and I just sat there filming while he was being, uh, you know. Attacked by Attacked him. by the deer with its razor sharp hooks. It was right. awesome. Um, all right, this one comes from Bubonic. Off topic, any thoughts from you guys on the shuttering of Lucas Arts and the state of the industry in general and how Kickstarter figures into the changing industry? Um, so, yeah, Lucas Arts shuttering its doors sucks when any studio shuts down. It's an awful thing because a lot of people lose their jobs. Um, our industry can be volatile at times, and there are people that feel like it needs to model itself after the film industry, but the film industry has a lot of standardizations, and it's completely unionized. Um, hopefully the game industry will never do that, and that we will just mature and handle ourselves in a much more professional manner. So that's awful. How does it apply to Kickstarter? Um, I think it's fantastic because you can get half a dozen, a dozen group of people together and you can get on Kickstarter just like we're doing and we can get enough support and build a community and make a game that that we build with everyone else. I, it's wonderful. It will continue to grow and thrive. So it's, uh, man, it's kind of a yin-yang thing, isn't it? Well... <clears throat> I've got two thoughts on this. The first one is that when a major studio or studio chain like that uh, goes away, it doesn't do anybody any good. I mean, people are losing their jobs, and I hate to see that. Okay, I really do, and we've had a ton of companies here in Austin shut down. Uh, a lot of my friends are out of work, so from that perspective, I hate hearing it anytime. Okay. But, on the other hand, with Kickstarter, what I think Stephen and I both feel the same way is that this is giving us a chance to show that you don't need 500 artists to make a game. You, need, you can go with a smaller team that is tighter and more um, 
uh, well, going back to the good old days, I mean, my first job at Eclipse Entertainment, we did Jack Nicholas Five with, I think, four artists. And I'm, I'm not sure how many programmers, but not over six or seven. And um, then we had another whole team uh, for a game that never actually came out. Uh, <clears throat> um, but I'm personally much more comfortable working on a small team where I can really go in there and, and, and start swinging. And um, that, that's something that Stephen and I have been doing here. And uh, Kickstarter sort of get, gives us that ability to put together a small team and grow it. Um, so there you have it. I like that. All right, we're doing good. Let's see. Um... Okay, Link of Hyrule. When I say graphic mods like textures and replacement art for items or maybe even models and such, um, we are going to defer till later before we answer that question. But exciting things to come. Yes. Okay, AppBot, come on, man. It's fun to see the developers. Ha ha, at least I'm having fun. <laughs> Monstery. Monstery, I love what you're writing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Link of Hyrule. Uh, anyways, get back to us when you can and keep up the great work. Looking forward to seeing some demos of a little of what it could be. Oh, yeah, we cannot wait to share. It's going to be wonderful. Um, let's see, from Aiden Blackwood. Will there be readable books or journals in most RPG games with books in a huge collection or just checking? Um, that honestly is a game designer question. Uh, it's certainly being talked talked about, and um, you might even be able to find an answer on the Kickstarter or Shroud website. Um, yeah, that gets talked about on a daily basis. I don't know where we're at, because they make us draw and model all day. Yeah, we pretty much have our heads down, and we're just in there like creating the content that we can right now. But anything's possible, and I will say that Richard has a reputation of being a great storyteller, yeah. so pretty much I wouldn't take anything off the possibility list. Yes. Um, from Aleph, yes, uh, we like this. Many of us are very eager to have any more info about the game and development. Uh, we like this too. Um, honestly, this last week I think has been, funnest is not the right word. Um, well, it's exciting because... It is, because we're engaging with the community and yeah, I've never done this before at this level. Usually it's marketing presentation and you just say your spin and then your feedback comes via like marketing junior guy from the publisher two weeks later. Which is yeah. another um, advantage of going to Kickstarter. Um, I mean before now our names were just on a box somewhere that probably nobody ever noticed but this gives no, you <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so uh, you know this really gives us a uh, better sense of what you guys are looking for and in case you're interested we really are interested in what you have to say uh, but once again don't be too disappointed if your every thing on your list is not put into the game because we can't do everything but we're going to do as much as we can small? we'll do our best <laughs> all right i'm excited to do some super kick-ass environments all right from cool phoenix at Steven, once a week on Friday for two hours giving updates on camp. Actually, I've signed up for every morning the rest of this week about 11. So I'm going to drag Bob in here tomorrow morning at 11 and we'll do this again. Um, every two weeks on camp. Honestly, we'd like to set something up in the studio so that you can just watch us anytime you want. It's always going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, if you're easily offended, <laughs> don't tune in. All right. We'll probably have to put up It'll like just a be one long series of beeps, <laughs> especially when I'm talking. Stephen is much more, uh, uh, what's the right word? You're more uh, reserved. Yes. Yeah, it's the small things that get me, like um, 
the keys on my keyboard stick a little bit, so I'll be writing and, you know, I won't have caps where I want caps or my Wacom pen isn't responding in Photoshop. It's those little things that totally set me off. I'm just like, ah! Artists are like that, though. I mean, <laughs> we were just talking about this the other day. Like, if the house burns down, we will be the people that totally handle it and not get stressed out by a freaking sticky key or a <laughs> keyboard that you know, some crazy shit. We are going to flip out, and I don't know why that is. It's some sort of new mental illness that is not chronicled in any journal so far. If you've ever used Photoshop, uh, you'll know that, or you'll understand why, as soon as I get a keyboard, I actually pop off the window keys that they put on there because they're right next to the Alt and Control keys, which you use constantly in Photoshop. Okay, um... Let's see, from Monks Terry, at Stephen and Bob, can you reveal any exciting details of features you're working on? Sorry, Stephen, I was JK before about leaving us here with Bob. I think uh, we... Oh, we know that. Himself. We know that. Yes, you would. <laughs> he would cave in in a heartbeat. <laughs> That's why you have both of us. <laughs> oh, okay. Um... <laughs> no worries. I will go to my grave swearing I will reveal okay. nothing untoward in this interview. Okay, this uh, one's from Maka. Hi, all. Any word on the update today? I thought the update today was coming out a little after lunch. Uh, they're probably uh, working on getting more stuff to add to the update, and so it should be going up any time now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could have had uh, to do yeah. with Richard being en route here, and they probably needed to go over some stuff in the meeting that they're in. <laughs> From Fox Dairy and Bob, can we expect to see some sneaky raccoon activity in the uh, game, in the environments? Um, hmm. I think it would be very easy Let to put, put a raccoon in the game and give him the name Bob, or Bob's Raccoon. Uh, okay. I will say that I have snuck a picture of Noodles, my dog. She's this really ridiculous looking big eared sort of Dalmatian slash. Uh, she was described once as a fragile deer dog creature to me. And anyway, I put this little stupid looking photo of her with her ears sticking like this on in every game that I've done since Ghostbusters. And in fact, she's in Ghostbusters. If you look at the. Uh, I think she ended up in the uh, 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 children's library section. But if you want to hear some interesting Zynga uh, history, I had put noodles in a, a picture frame and put it in, uh, was it Frontier? No, it was the bill. And after I left Zynga, somebody saw it and decided that it should be the Mona Lisa. So they put the Mona Lisa instead of noodles into this frame and put it in the game, but it was actually still entitled Mona Lisa in one of the UI elements. So you, you pull up this frame of a dog and it says Mona Lisa underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> and all of my friends told me that they intentionally did not take the, correct that mistake because they wanted noodles in the game. That's it's awesome. a tradition. Game making is fun. All right, thank you, everybody. Um, I am Stephen Donnelly, lead concept artist for Shroud of the Avatar, saying goodbye till tomorrow morning. And I'm Bob Cooksey, art fraud. <laughs> lead environment artist. All right. I hope you've enjoyed ourselves. We've totally enjoyed ourselves. And, um, yeah, have a great afternoon, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. I think Rick's going to be next. And... Um, I'm going to point the camera at Dippy here, and he'll be in shortly. By the way, some people thought I said shut up, Chris, yesterday in the background. <laughs> That's a lie. I said, hello, Chris. And if you believe that one. <laughs>